Welcome to this uh, uh, pretty much live uh, improvised uh, live stream uh, in my quarantine. It almost rhymes even. Uh, I'm coming to you live via the internet from uh, Oslo, Norway, where I am currently in quarantine. Um, uh, Day three, uh, doing good. I'm not sick in any way, it seems, uh, but uh, I'm quarantined as a precaution. Um, I thought it would be a, a nice idea maybe to um, to spend some of this time that we have now uh, doing something constructive, something creative, something perhaps even fun. Uh, some people turn to religion in times like these. I turn to Super Collider. So, uh, if you would like to join me, I would. Uh, I'm going to show you some stuff in Super Collider. So this all this is all improvised. So I don't have a script or anything. So hopefully uh, it's not going to get too messy. Um, but uh, again, I feel like this is uh, a nice free form. Uh, that uh, I can take advantage of to maybe do some things that I wouldn't do if I was teaching a specific workshop or uh, a tutorial or something like that. It seems there's a bit of a delay on uh, on my webcam in the corner, so uh, I hope that doesn't freak you out. Uh, it's it's just constantly in the past. I'm getting haunted by the past in the corner of my live stream video here. Um, I've got a chat client uh, going on YouTube, so if anyone is watching and uh, uh, has any questions or uh, any comments, just uh, don't hesitate to write them in there. Um, I will try to keep up uh, if there's anything. Uh, I'm not the most uh, experienced live streamer in the world, I have to say. Uh, so, And there's a bit of technical complexities here, so I just hope that everything works and uh, works properly, but let me know if it doesn't. So anyway, um, let's get to it. I thought that um, for today we could do something that I think is really fun and it's one of the best parts of uh, Super Collider in my opinion and it's uh, this ability to be able to live code things uh, and Today I would like to show you some nice uh, tricks uh, which come baked into Super Collider and will save you lots of time uh, and lots of kind of uh, uh, plumbing code, I guess, uh, because a lot of the hard stuff has been done for you. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking into uh, node proxies. They look like this, node proxy. I could actually type it correctly. Here it is. Node proxy preset. No, node proxy. Here it is. This is a node proxy. Uh, I'm getting some NDEF hearts in the chat. That's good uh, because that's exactly where we're going. So a node proxy is uh, this kind of super duper object that just can uh, contain pretty much all kinds of things, but uh, commonly it contains a uh, audio process of some kind that could either be at uh, audio rate or at control rate. Uh, so you could imagine that you can make uh, a node proxy which contains uh, uh, an oscillator of some kind uh, at sound rate. So it's playing a tone that goes doot, which we'll get to in a minute. And then some node proxies may contain, for example, uh, an LFO, which will you can use to modulate uh, that sine wave that goes, that used to go, doo, but we will make it go, woo, 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 like that. Anyway, uh, so as with oh, with almost anything in Super Collider and in code, there's uh, a million ways you can write this same thing. Um, you could create a node proxy like this. We won't do that, but now you know what it looks like. Some people they create a proxy space and then they create node proxies like writing uh, an environment variable and then 
uh, some kind of sound function. We won't do that either, so scratch those two. Instead, we will use my uh, the the tr always trustworthy class endef. So an endef is uh, in the family of uh, def classes in uh, Super Collider. So like any other kind of def, like an OSC def or a MIDI def or uh, a synth def, uh, the first um, the first argument is the name. And so I'm going to create an endef. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, 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 Q3 because uh, this is day three of my quarantine. And we will then uh, put a audio uh, an audio process into it and be able to live code it. And that's what actually that's the whole point of this thing is that we are able to live code. Uh, the insides of an endef, and uh, this is going to get quite magical very quickly because uh, an endef can contain so many things, and basically uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, and what's really cool, what you get without actually changing anything, is if I just go ahead and start this. This is going to be a bit loud. Maybe I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Now we have a sine wave, like I said before, playing at 444 hertz. I can now access this and change the parameters by writing endef and then the name Q3 and then using the dot set method. Using the dot set method, I can choose a parameter and for this one, I'm going to say freak because I defined freak up here. That's the frequency of the oscillator. And let's set it to 200. All right, now it's playing at 200 Hertz. Um, but the change is happening kind of abruptly. Actually, it's happening almost immediately. The only uh, latency I think that you get from this is from uh, the latency you have between the language and the server. So whatever you have set that to, that's probably the latency you have here. But already now I'm gonna show you a really nice and cool trick. Uh, I'm just gonna stop this for a minute. Because, and actually here I would like to advise everyone to uh, update to the latest version of Super Collider, uh, which at the time of this video is 3.11. Um, Um, 3.11, Super Collider 3.11 contains a lot of really uh, good bug fixes that, uh, uh, especially when we are having fun with endefs, uh, are just kind of actually vital, I would say. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you now how to do stuff with fades in uh, an endef and. Um, uh, and if you're using anything other than 3.11, you may get some kind of strange uh, warnings uh, when you do this, but uh, fear not. I would just advise you to upgrade to either upgrade to 3.11 or ignore those warnings if it seems like it's all working like it should. Uh, let me just move these things around a bit. So. Let's run this again, and this time let's do it in stereo. Oof, it's a bit loud. Okay, now it's in stereo, and to be able to crossfade these changes that we just did, so instead of going pop, pop, pop immediately, we can do that smoothly by uh, crossfading the change and to be able to crossfade a change into an endef we use we set this value uh, variable I guess it is uh, fade time so if we evaluate this we can see what the fade time is right now the fade time is 0 0.02 beats that's the latency I was talking about before uh, except before I said it was the server latency which uh, is I guess a part of uh, the latency but most importantly 
this latency of 0.02 beats is the one that does the trick here, I guess. Uh, but if we set it to something a bit more significant, we can uh, quickly see uh, what happens when we change this frequency parameter. So I'm going to say, oh, I was about to do an error there. I'm going to say this fade time is equal to two beats. All right. And if we just evaluate this bit, we can see, all right, now it's two beats. And so every time we evaluate this, I'm going to put in a random frequency between 80 and uh, let's say 500. Let's keep it somewhere reasonable. All right, so now I evaluate this and there's no fade time. It's just immediately changing the frequency because we need to use a different method. Uh, let's say, let's just comment this and say this is the uh, uh, the abrupt, abruptly change the frequency. Okay. Let's do it a less, less abrupt, abrupt change of frequency. So to do this in a less abrupt way, we just put an X in front of the set. So now it says X set and otherwise it's exactly the same. And it's going to change into a, a random frequency. And now, you get this really nice, smooth crossover. Even though it's just one object playing, when we set fade time, it's going to create a copy of what you're listening to and then s smoothly uh, transition into this new thing, this newly changed synth. So this is already, in my opinion, this is starting to get uh, a bit interesting because we can now change this and let's just change this uh, source function here to a triangle just to get a bit more, uh, a few more uh, harmonics in the mix. And then, let's change all of this up a bit. I'm going to make this a bit more neat. So I'm going to put this in a variable called sick and remove this. So now this sick contains a mono signal with the low frequency triangle in there. And what I'm going to do now is not so magical, but I'm going to do it anyway. Pan to R. I'm going to pan this mono signal. This is the signal. I'm going to pan it. We're using a new parameter called pan, not surprisingly. And this, the rest of this I'm going to remove. And I'm going to add pan as a parameter here, set it to zero. So pan goes from 0 0.1 to uh, 1.0. No. Uh, minus, sorry, <laughs> completely screwed that up. It's It goes from minus 1.0 to 1.0 positive. Okay, let's change it. So actually now you, hear, you heard something, probably something... Yeah. You heard the transition and the smoothness in when I change the source as well. Um, okay, so to be able to change the panning, I'm gonna add pan here, and then I'm actually gonna do the same. I'm gonna say a random value between minus 1.1, minus 1.0 and 1.0. So now this random tone is going to appear all over the stereo field. You got your lefts, you got your mids, slightly lefts and slightly rights. And if we change the fade time to something a bit more uh, 
vulgar. Let's set it to 10. 10, that's actually, that's, that's just completely crazy, isn't it? We're gonna do it anyway. Fade time is 10. Ooh, yeah, that's smooth. Very subtle. So I think this is pretty cool because we can actually start play to play this piece of code as if it was an instrument now. So that's nice. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you uh, is uh, where things get really uh, mind-blowing in my opinion. Because what we've done now is that we've set just the source of the endf. So you can imagine this as kind of the, the layout of uh, a door. In a, in a mixer channel on a door, you will see, uh, let's say the, 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 the first slot of your plugins is some kind of synth playing uh, triangle waves. Uh, so that's the first slot. And the output of that is going into the next slot, and the output of that is going to, into a next slot. Uh, so we could imagine that the, the source, which is the triangle wave we just made here, is the first slot in this door mixer channel. And then in the next slot, let's put an effects, uh, an effect uh, like we would with a VST plugin or something similar. Uh, this kind of architecture is actually built into an endf, uh, so it's very, very easy. Let me just restart this. Now we're going to add, add an FX, add an FX, and the syntax for this is immediately a bit strange, but if once you get used to it, it's not that hard. So the way this works is that we index into this endf. So at index zero, that's the source. And we set the source to the triangle wave that's currently playing. So we want to put uh, our effect, the first effect in slot one, because that's the first one after the source code. The source, uh, yeah, yeah, it is actually the source code, but the first one after the source sound. So I'm gonna go slot one equals filter and then an arrow and then a function where the first argument is the sound from the previous slot so we call this in you could call it whatever you want but uh, it's common to call this in so I'm gonna put an effect in here Let's do something like, uh, something simple. Let's make a frequency shifter here. Frequency shift AR. Put in here. Uh, and then freak shift freak. That's gonna be the name of the uh, frequency shift argument. So that's the amount of frequencies uh, it's going to shift, I guess. And then the rest of the arguments we just kindly ignore. So. I'm just going to copy this to in here and then give it a default value. Uh, let's say one. All right. And now uh, I guess I should make this slightly more readable before I evaluate it. Okay. That's a bit better. Okay, now I'm going to evaluate it and let's see if it works. Okay, so during this transition you could hear the wobbling happening. The wobble of the frequency shifter. And now we can do the same 
can use xset to change in this same object we can change now we can change freak shift freak to uh, 10 or a hundred or 200 hey how about that so what we did here was we used something called a node proxy role uh, and it's one of those things that uh, just has a terrible name in Super Collider, uh, because I don't think I don't think a lot of people uh, go around searching the uh, documentation for uh, node proxy roles. Uh, at least to me, that's not a natural thing to go looking for. But there's actually a very good uh, help file. Uh, so if you go uh, open up Super Collider and search for node proxy roles node proxy roles okay see help file help file node proxy roles what you'll see here is that what we did here is used one pro role called filter and the thing about filter is that it comes baked in with some nice uh, accessories so a filter the filter role it uh, does exactly what it says it takes the sound in and then filters it through some kind of sound function. And that sound function here is the frequency shifter. And if I just play this again, let's try a new tone here. Let's mix it up. And then reduce the fade time to something a bit more reasonable again. And turn up the volume perhaps. So, oh yeah, what I wanted to show you was this. Um, we defined this parameter called frequency shift, but there's actually, we get another parameter for free called wet. And wet does exactly what you expect. It's uh, used for setting the amount of uh, filtering of the audio signal. Uh, so exactly like in a door when you have an effect and you turn it up and down in wetness to apply to kind of change uh, how much of the effect you want to apply to the incoming signal, I guess. Um, for each of these uh, effects that we add in, uh, we get a wet parameter. And the, the parameter is called wet and then the number of the slot, which if you go up here, you can see it is one. So wet one and set it to 0 0.5. Let's just play this again before we evaluate. All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not so clear when we're listening to a frequency shifter. So let's change this to something a bit more ridiculous. Let's change it to the pitch shifter. frequency shifter and then say the pitch is by default uh, a half which will pitch down half a uh, uh, should pitch it down one octave I think pitch dispersion is uh, kind of the randomness of the pitch uh, which is used to um, um, to kind of blur the the pitch image I guess let's put this to 0 0.1 this is already always a nice effect and then pitch dispersion. Time dispersion is uh, um, the time between the, the grains in the pitch shifter, I guess, the randomness in that. Uh, let's set that to a tasty 0 0.1. All right. 
now we're getting this sweet computer music sound. Nothing says uh, 1980s computer music like uh, uh, a, a pitch shifter. But actually now we can hear quite clearly, if I just get rid of this, and just change the wet parameter. You can hear quite clearly, cl clearly now that it's, now we're setting it to 100% wetness. and then to no wetness at all. So now we just have this frequency, low frequency triangle wave uh, tone. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a, f we're only getting started here, but that's uh, a couple of the really nice things that you can do with a um, NDEF. Another thing that you get for free, which is uh, very helpful in some in some cases, and in other cases it's kind of not helpful at all, is uh, you get a GUI for free. Uh, and I'm gonna make a GUI for this, uh, but I'm actually not sure if you're able to see it in my streaming setup here, but uh, hopefully you will be able to see it. Otherwise I'm gonna just change about some things here. To use the GUI, uh, and to get a GUI, uh, you just type dot GUI. That's it. Have some more coffee. So when I evaluate this dot GUI, uh, it's going to pull up a generic GUI interface uh, for this node proxy uh, definition that we've made, NDEF. And at least to me, this is a hand handy thing to have sometimes if I just need to mess around with uh, some parameters. Um, so let's just evaluate this. Here you go. Here's the GUI. It's not pretty. Oops. Uh, let me just see if you can actually see this. Okay, you can't. I'm gonna add it here. Let's add a window. Uh, Collider window, and we're gonna add uh, end of GUI. Okay, is this working? Is this working? Are you able to see it? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, I also realize now that my whole uh, code editor is getting stretched to bits okay that's better okay now you see this GUI hopefully uh, uh, if you're using a high definition screen or whatever it's called uh, then the text is kind of small and then probably it's hidden under here and I guess that's because the the GUI for the um, just-in-time library as it's called it was made a while ago, uh, but it still works very well. It can be a bit hard to see, but what we get here for free, and this is just made, this is getting created automatically for us, so I can press play. This will play our synth. I can change the frequency, change the pan, the wetness, the pitch, So this is kind of useful sometimes for just testing out some things. It still has this uh, frequency shift freak. Uh, you can't really see it for the button here, but there's a frequency shift freak uh, parameter here uh, from the earlier um, effect that we had. Uh, right now it doesn't do anything, but um, we could probably remove it, remove it if we wanted to. Uh, and uh, yeah, very useful little tip. Use the GUI if you want to mess around. How do you set min max values for your GUI someone is writing? Uh, that's a good question. Let's see if we can uh, 
let's see if we can uh, do that. So the way it works is it uses uh, it uses uh, a kind of um, it uses something called controlled specs to set uh, the specifications for uh, uh, parameters. So what kind of values can be mapped uh, and to what range um, and whether whether or not it's a linear or an exponential uh, thing. Um, it's not something that I do very often. Uh, I like to do it uh, in a different kind of way, which is probably a more stupid kind of way. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see if I can actually, we can do that for our little uh, NDEF here. So uh, a good example of a parameter that would be nice to have a certain minimum and maximum uh, value of would be pitch. So pitch is, um, let's say that I like to have my pitch uh, go from 0 0.25. Let's change the range of the pitch argument from 0 0.25 to 4.0. So 4.0, I think, is a... Uh, um, nice maximum value. Let's set it at 10, just to be vulgar again. It's fun to be vulgar with uh, computer music. Um, so to be able to use this, we need to create a control spec for it. And I actually can't remember how to do that. So I'm going to look at the... I can remember how to do a control spec, but how to add it to an NDEF. I need to look up the help file here. Control spec, no, spec, 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 no, okay. Let's look at the node proxy help file. Spec, specify, control, spec, okay. Spec, here we are. So Specs specify what kind of input is required or permissible and what the range of those parameters are. This is an abstract class. The most common subclass is control spec. So this is actually the one that we're going to use, control spec. Control spec is used, for, used by GUI sliders and knobs to specify the range and the curve of the controls. Input data types. Input data types are of interest to functions, to GUI interface face objects, sliders, etc., and can also be used for introspection. I, I don't know what half of that means, to be honest, but uh, let's look at the control spec here. The original and most common spec. <laughs> oh, this is funny to me somehow. The original and most common spec, C spec. A control spec is used by GUI sliders. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And so let's see here. Duck a duck a duck. Mm hmm. Okay, so as far as I remember, you do it like this. So we're gonna say spec dot, I think it's specs, is it specs? Yeah, so spec dot specs is uh, a dictionary which contains all of the, um, all of the uh, specifications uh, that you get by default. So if you noticed before, it uh, it very clearly understood that frequency was a, a frequency uh, parameter that goes from uh, uh, a certain value of uh, I think I think it's twenty by default or something. Uh, actually, we could just look it up here. Freak. Freak. Yeah. So what you see here is that it's a control spec that goes from a value of twenty to twenty thousand hertz. That is, and that's an exponential curve. And it's called Hertz, and the default value, I guess, this is what the default value is. And Jeffrey Montel is in the chat saying, how about 
dot add spec and yes that's actually what I use uh, usually do but I'm not sure if that's part of the uh, jitlib extensions package uh, but we can do that uh, but let's just try and see if we can make a global spec first the default uh, value uh, specification for the frequency parameter okay so let's say spec specs add control spec okay and then let's see if I can get this to auto complete that would make it a bit easier no okay control spec <laughs> okay specs spec there it is uh -huh. new no okay so I'm gonna put it in uh, my no I'm gonna call it pitch e pitch e because then we know for sure that this is a parameter that we've uh, made uh, so pitchy uh, I'm gonna change the parameter above to pitchy in a minute but I'm gonna set pitchy to something that goes from 125 to 4.0 Okay. Add. Let's see. Name. Ax. Okay. Let's see. Add a spec. Add a spec. Okay. Add. Oh, okay. I don't need the control spec bit. Okay. So pitchy goes from 0 0.25 to 4.0. Uh, and let's say it's a linear curve. This could be exp instead. Uh, and those next values, let's see what those are. I can't remember. Uh, let's see. Control spec. No. Control spec. Okay, so the warping, that's linear. Steps. Okay, and then the default. So steps, I guess. If we set it to 0, 0.0, it's probably gonna be smooth. And then the default value is uh, 0 0.5. Okay. So I just remove this and then remove the help window here. It still doesn't understand it. Okay. Specs, spec. Okay. Add. Let's see the example here again of adding. Okay. Spec. I didn't need this. Specs. We just add it like this. Okay. And now let's see this dictionary again. This is the global dictionary. Let's see pitchy. What's the value of that? Yeah. This is our little uh, our little specification for the pitch. And uh, just to uh, make it even nicer, let's add a label to it. So. Uh, frequency you see it has a label of Hertz HZ uh, let's add something ridiculous here as well uh, I'm, I'm just gonna make up a value for pitch on the go now uh, let's say uh, the amount uh, one unit of pitch let's call it uh, 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 P yeah that's that's a good value so I see here it's called P. So now, hopefully, if we go back here and change this to Pitchy. Okay. We still have our computer music. Let's change this to a different tone. Ooh, that's a bit deep. Center it a bit more. Okay, so now if I pull up the GUI and put it somewhere else, Pitchy is here. Are you able to see Pitchy? Let's see. Yeah, you can see Pitchy. Pitchy is right here. So let's see, you can see the value on the right, and let's turn it all the way down 0 0.25. 
25 all the way up and it's 4 so this is exactly what we set it to and I think the value uh, our P uh, uh, value uh, something something label that we made I guess it's in here somewhere uh, but at least now we have our own custom parameter and it goes from 0 0.25 to 4 uh, I think actually I said that we wanted to have it go to 10 let's get it, make it go to 10 see if it changes itself yeah so when I updated the specification now it goes all the way to 10 I'm not sure pitch shift actually takes values that high but it works aha uh -huh. okay and let's press this nice little stop button and start again because then you can see this another freebie you get with NDEFs a volume slider pretty cool um, so that's how you add specifications um, as uh, Jeffrey Montel has suggested uh, on the, the chat you can use dot add spec directly on the NDEF so you would go dot add spec and then something here and this I guess would add local specifications to this one uh, NDEF uh, and what we did here was we added it to the global dictionary of specifications uh, so uh, um, you yeah judge from judge for yourself with which, which is better for your situation uh, let's just say maybe a method from JIT lib extensions uh, quark this is a really nice package that I re recommend everyone gets um, okay so let's move on those were some nice tips uh, how long have we been going actually yeah for a while okay we don't give up so easily though there's still 11 and a half days of quarantine so we've got plenty t plenty of time here so uh, another thing that I would like to show you if I just uh, go somewhere else in the document and get a bit of space here and let's make a new NDEF let's call this one uh, no actually scratch that we're gonna use this the same NDEF we used before NDEF Q3 play so uh, a really cool thing you can do is that you can easily make copies of your NDEFs and this is uh, done as easily as saying dot copy and then you add in the name of the new one so let's say uh, this is uh, an NDEF for the fourth day of my quarantine so let's call it Q4 and then it just returns this new end of Q4. All right. So if I say end of Q4 play, it's going to play exactly the same one on top of it. But we want to have a new our new end of to end of copy to play uh, at a slightly different frequency. So. Mm, Let's give it a random range, random frequency between 500, 250 and 500. Random pan of uh, uh, minus one to one. And then play. So now we have two synths that we can play around with. Q3 and Q4. So. I can still use Q3 down here, it's still playing. I can stop it. Now we only hear Q4, and let's play Q3 again. Let's X set the frequency of Q3 to uh, 80. Oh wow, and the wetness of the pitch shift, 0.9. Oh yeah. 
So that's how easy it is to make uh, copies of what you did. Uh, so imagine if you're in a situation where you are doing a live performance or whatever, um, and you're thinking to yourself, it would be nice with another voice in this uh, synthesizer patch, then it's as easy as going dot copy Q4 and that's it. Um, Yeah, so you can quickly get up and running. Uh, the reason I mentioned in the beginning that it's a good idea to upgrade to 3.11 is that uh, one of the many, I have to say, uh, really nice uh, bug fixes that were made is that when you copy this, if you do this before 3.11, you don't get the fade time included. So right now, you can see now Q3 has a fade time, Q4, sorry, has a fade time of two and so does Q3. But if you're on an earlier version of Super Collider, then the copied uh, NDEF, which is Q4, it will probably have a fade time of the default 0 0.02. So I guess uh, I just want you to upgrade because uh, that's a really nice feature to have. Okay, so I'm gonna put a note here. Uh, make a copy of Q4, Q3, sorry, and call it Q4. Uh, and yes, someone on the chat is uh, uh, <laughs> is commenting on my keyboard, which yes, it is a Cherry MX. That's how big of a nerd I am. And I guess it's probably the least, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, it's a terrible keyboard to use for a live stream because half of what you're going to hear is the actual keyboard. And of course I chose the noisiest variant uh, because I'm clearly an idiot, but uh, uh, hopefully it's a soothing sound in this sound in this time of trouble. Um, but uh, let's continue. Oh yeah, and by the way, did you notice when I copied the Q3 NDEF into Q4, it actually... Uh, got the our effect as well so i think that's pretty cool um let's go back to these amazing node proxy roles let's play q3 again so the another node proxy role uh is is um this thing where you can add uh, a pattern that controls uh everything that came before it in the in the sort of in the array so imagine at the bottom of our list of vst plugins we have uh, a sequencer i guess we can th think of it like that so at the top we have our frequency uh, our lfo no it's not an lfo it's an oscillator making the sound in this case it's a triangle wave and it's passing through the next slot of our effects chain and that's the pitch shift that we hear now, which is making this uh, computer music 80s uh, effect. And uh, and at the bottom, or it doesn't have to be at the bottom, but uh, the cool thing about putting it at the bottom of your chain is that it, it gets access to everything before that. So it's just uh, a, a nice thing to have it always somewhere at the bottom. So we can go put it in a slot so let's put in a um, and in slot number uh, 999 that leaves us uh, 997 or 8 or whatever uh, slots to have fun with uh, between our pitch shifter and our uh, pattern here so I'm gonna put a pattern here and we can use two different node proxy roles there's one called PSET which I'm gonna show you now and then there's one called X set, and you can probably imagine what that one does. The P set, we can set that to a pattern. It's a P bind, and if you don't know too much about P binds, then uh, uh, I guess read about them. <laughs> um, uh, this isn't uh, the place to go into too much details with patterns, but let's just make a simple pattern here. So. Every fourth beat, uh, every time, it's going to wait four beats and then it's going to change a value. Let's change the frequency value to something uh, between 
random between 100 and 500. So that's pretty cool. We can actually start, so in this way we can, we have now live coded a synthesizer and now we're live coding a composition for it. And so if I change this P to an X, you can hear the changes are faded in and out. And we can add some more parameters here. So we defined a pan parameter. Let's just set that to a random value of minus one to one, somewhere between that range. And let's change our pitchy, a uh, custom pitchy uh, parameter as well. Let's use a sequence here. P sec uh, 0.5, uh, two and a half, one, 1 1.75, and then let it repeat infinitely. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking this sounds terrible. Yes, it sounds terrible, but it sounds terrible in a way that's technically interesting, I guess. And at some point may end up sounding less terrible. So uh, that's the whole point of using this uh, workflow. We can live code everything. We can live code the synthesizer, the instrument, and we can live code the parameters of it. And we can live code a composition for it at the same time. And uh, this is used for live performances a lot, uh, but actually it's just a really nice way of working uh, back in your studio, whatever your studio is. Um, uh, so we're gonna continue working on this, I guess, uh, until it sounds just a bit better. Um, oh yeah, and I didn't mention this before, but uh, my studio in this time of quarantine is literally a um, washing board. I can, let's see if I can, if you can actually, tilt this down a bit maybe you can see my little home studio yep it's literally a washing board which is surprisingly comfortable i have to say uh let's get rid of this gooey again so yeah shout out to a uh, washing board uh no it's not a washing board it's an ironing board sorry ironing board so shout out to ironing board manufacturers out there you're doing a great job and I don't think that uh, ironing boards have been uh, recognized for their uh, ergonomics uh, properly, I think. Uh, great ergonomics. Better than most tables. Anyway, back to our little example here. So that was the X set um, node proxy role. Let's have it play again. Change the time dispersion to zero point zero. Change the pitch dispersion to zero as well. Let's just see how that sounds. Oof. Okay, and if I then go back here and say, let's change the fade time to something like 10. Oof. And then change the duration here to a sequence. Let me 
just turn up the sound of Super Collider a bit here. Just having a look, quick look in the um, help file of uh, NDEF to see if there's anything that I've forgotten. Oh yeah, of course there is. Um, we haven't even covered uh, adding uh, LFOs and uh, mapping things. So let's do that now. Uh, so I'm going to use the new copy that we made, Q4, and play that because it's still static. Nothing is changing here. But we want to change uh, something. So I'm gonna make a new NDEF called uh, uh, Squonk. And uh, that's an LFO. So I'm gonna put in a, a parameter called uh, uh, LFO Freak. Set it to 0 0.1. And I'm gonna make an LF saw. Yeah. Give it the LFO freak parameter, and then evaluate it. And now we have an LFO. So we're not hearing anything yet because it's not used for anything yet. What we can do with this is we can patch it into something. Uh, and let's try and patch it into uh, one of the parameters of Q4. Uh, how about we? change uh, let's see which one would be fun maybe the okay someone said time dispersion okay let's modulate time dispersion time the oh, time dispersion so this is what you do you'd say dot map and there's an equivalent called dot xmap of course if you want to do this with a crossfade but we'll do that in a minute ndf squonk i guess it's a bit hard to hear let's put it in pitchy instead oh, sorry what you need to do is if, if you want to unmap you have to go and put nil in there and let's put it in pitchy Just change the wetness here. Set X set just for the nice uh, fade time. Uh, wetness zero point eighty five. And as we did before, uh, we can copy this. So we can make a copy dot copy score one two. Now Squonk2 is an LFO, exact uh, older brother Squonk, and we can use that for something else. Let's try and put it into the frequency parameter. Freak and def Squonk2. See that died. That just died completely. And that's because that's because uh, this LFO is running at. Uh, between of a range between minus one and plus one. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, we could, I guess we could. Uh, mm, uh, I'm gonna instead. I'm just gonna say fuck that. And make define squonk two from new here and say uh, let's map it from uh, minus one to one to a frequency of uh, 40 and between 40 and and 2500 let's 
make this second one a bit faster. Maybe slightly slower than that. Alright. So, let's try another thing here. Let's map. LFO creep. Let's map the first LFO we made, called Squonk, to the second one. Alright. Now we're getting somewhere. And why not make this even more interesting? Let's take the first... Oh my god. I'm not very good at typing this today. Let's add a node proxy role here for a squonk. At index 999. Let's add a pattern. Called xset. Bind. Duration. Hmm. Let's just randomly jump between... 0, 1, and 8. Let's see? Mm -hmm. And set LFO freak to a random val value between 0 0.01 and uh, 10, I guess. Alright. Guess this is getting more interesting. I'm gonna make another copy here of Squonk. And I'm gonna say Copy Squonk the third. The herd. Okay. Oh okay. The third. Squonk third. Squonk the third is now uh, an LFO. Squonk the third. And I am going to... And I'm going to... Yeah, someone's writing, all of a sudden we have Raymond Scott on acid. I thought Raymond Scott was always on acid. Did he ever stop not... Uh, did he ever not... Was he never not on acid? I, that's my question. I guess that's something to think about during these uh, times of quarantine. Uh, uh, but anyway, Squonk the third. I want to use that to change the uh, panning, and I'm gonna add it using XMap instead of Map. So I'm gonna patch it into the pan and Squonk the third. And since I'm using XMap, we should hear some kind of fade over. Yep. Is this good music? I don't know. It's not up to me to decide. I'm just showing some things here. Uh, let's change this around a bit.